of all the drugs that have been used by mankind over the centuries, I would venture to argue that cannabis is the most benign. Certainly, more money has been spent trying to uh, find something wrong with cannabis than has ever been spent on any other drug and the findings are uh, woeful, uh, 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 well, there's just no support for the idea that cannabis is anything other than as benign as a drug can be when you consider that it has to be smoked. So there is the issue of the generation of tars. Now it is true that in India, charas, which is what is smoked uh, as the equivalent of hashish, is actually a much more complex material. Charas can, often contains opium, nearly always contains uh, datura, uh, parts of the datura plant which contain tropane alkaloids, and it usually is held together by resin binders from various varieties of pine trees. Uh, nevertheless, apparently, uh, the smoking of charas in India is also an extremely non-destructive habit. Uh, alcohol, on the other hand, is demonstrably one of the most destructive of all social habits. I mean, I think what a bright world it would be if every alcoholic were a pothead. What a bright world it would be if uh, every user and abuser of speed and caffeine were a pothead. It seems to be a, uh, a plant which has evolved in a very intimate association with human beings from a very early time and hence whatever deleterious effects it has we have managed to accommodate ourselves to them very well. Uh, one of the most interesting things about cannabis as a cultural phenomenon I think is um, first of all notice how uh, cannabis is the resin product of the hemp plant the hemp plant is, since the Neolithic forward, the um, uh, preferred source of fiber and cordage. And I think it's interesting to note how uh, the language of story and the, lang and the technical language of weaving are very, very similar. In other words, we untangle a, a, a narrative, we weave a story, lies are made of whole cloth. All of these words which describe uh, the use of fibrous materials are also the words that we use for uh, storytelling and narrative. And I think it's because probably these two concerns, weaving and uh, storytelling and linguistic facility, go back and find themselves in congruence in the hemp plant. The other thing that's interesting is that um, the, in the cultivation of hemp for resin purposes, for drug production purposes, all the emphasis falls upon the female plant. The male plant does not produce a usable drug material. And in fact, female plants, if in the presence of male plants, uh, become contaminated with male pollen and then produce an inferior drug product. So hemp it, it literally demands the honoring 
of the female. Now, I'm not suggesting that this was consciously in the minds of primitive people because the female hemp plant does not particularly appear female in any way that can be associated to human femaleness. But it is nevertheless true that hemp plants come in two very distinct forms and we now know that one of these forms is the expression of the male plant, the other is the expression of the female plant. So waves of Gylanic resurgence uh, that have been coming and going since the Neolithic uh, seem to me in many cases to carry along as one of the appurtenances of the Gylanic sensibility uh, devotion to this particular drug and this particular plant uh, above all others. Anybody want to jump in here? Well, <clears throat> only a small question mm -hmm. to start with. Um, since the leaves of the male plant do have a pharmacological effect, um, I just wondered if you had anything to say on your experience of comparing the effects of the two. Well, only in that if it has a pharmacological effect, its orders of magnitude more weakened than the female. Uh, one thing I might say, we in the 20th century tend to smoke our cannabis. I mean, aside for the occasional holiday cannabis cookie, uh, cannabis for us is something that is smoked. On the other hand, for the 19th century and for all of European civilization, uh, cannabis was something uh, that was eaten in the form of various sugared confections that were prepared and this method of ingestion changes cannabis into an extremely powerful psychedelic experience. I mean if you read the accounts of people like uh, uh, Theodore Gautier or Baudelaire or Fitzhugh Ludlow written in the mid 19th century they are describing experiences that obviously were for them as powerful as a 500 microgram dose of LSD proved uh, in our own lifetimes. Uh, and we forget this. We tend to think of it as a social uh, as a social drug and a kind of a minor drug uh, on a par with smoking a cigarette or having a cognac or something like that. But in fact, for the serious eater, of Ashish, there it is the portal into a true artificial paradise uh, whose length and breadth is equal to that of any of the artificial paradises that we've discovered in modern psychedelic pharmacology. To my mind, the whole of Orient, of, uh, by Oriental I mean Indian and Middle Eastern civilization, is steeped in the ambiance of hashish. I mean, the Mosque of Omar, for example, is a beautiful example of the aesthetic of hashish at work, or Jama Masjid in Delhi, or the um, interiors of the mosques of Isfahan. This ideal of sensual beauty, of the uh, richness of abstract design and vaulting spaces and uh, vast concourses of uh, polished marble and travertine, these seem to be uh, the motifs of hashish uh, in the same way that the Gothic vision of black ocean water sucking at haunted islands is a part of the repertoire of the opium vision that so entranced uh, the romantic poets. Hash hashish cannabis has an ambiance of its own. It has a morphogenetic field and if you enter into that morphogenetic field you enter into a, a an androgynous softened abstract colorful uh, and extraordinarily beautiful world